I'm making this part two video because shortly after I posted the part one video, and originally it wasn't called part one, it was just called How to Repair a Telecron Oxford Clock. But once it was posted, one of my subscribers reached out to me telling me that he had a uh, the base that goes to this clock and he'd be happy to send it to me. So I said, please do, it sounded great. He sent me some pictures of it. I have received it and I'll show you what it looks like. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same case. The major differences is that this one is missing these posts and the finials that go here. But I expressed concern to him on how am I gonna get the, the, the bottom of it off from the case without damaging anything. And he told me that it is attached using what he calls animal glue. And I had not heard of that, wasn't aware of it. So I started to do some research on it. He did mention to me that I should be able to remove it if I use a steamer. And what I found in doing a bit of research is that animal glue, which is also called hide glue, is a solid at room temperature, but if you heat it up, it turns liquid. And what I saw someone doing to repair some antique furniture that had been glued that way is he would get the areas where the wood was joined wet with some water and then used a hot air gun, of which I have one. So my plan is to do just that. And what I'm gonna try first, I'm noticing that there were four feet on this base. One is missing. And I'm gonna to look to try to remove these three. If I can get everything the way I want it, I'll just put some felt pads on the bottom. So I think if I moisten this enough and hit it with the hot air, and then with a small chisel, I might be able to just tap it off. So I'm gonna give that a shot. And uh, if I'm successful, I get to continue and get the rest of the base off. So let me work on it and then we'll come back. I've removed two of these legs so easily doing it this way that I, I'll try to show you how I'm doing it, but pretty much have a little bit of water here and with a brush, just applying the water around the edge of the, of the leg here. And then just putting the hot air on it for a couple of minutes. Just all the way around. Once I've done that for a long enough period, I just come underneath here with a chisel, give it a few taps with the hammer and it comes right off. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that once I have the four of them off then I'm going to work on separating the base from the case. I was able to remove the base, but it proved to be much more difficult than I expected. And the reason is this particular case is solid. Whereas the first one I have, and I assume this might be newer than this one, and perhaps it was less costly to just fit four pieces of wood together to make a case rather than to carve it out of a solid piece of wood. But what happened was, although I could place some wood around the edge and heat it up and tap in with a chisel to begin to free it up, I couldn't get any moisture deep enough on the inside to affect the glue. So what I ended up doing was using a very thin bladed scraper and just placed it around the edges and just tapped it down gradually all the way around, all four sides, until I worked my way far enough down to be able to pry this off. So my plan now, sand this up, smooth it out a little bit, and then I'll look to refinish this part, and then attach this to this one. And I'd like to do it with a combination of glue and hopefully some nails, or actually screws would be better. A couple of screws on either side here and that way I know it won't come off ever again. So let me get to work on that, and when I'm ready to reassemble it, I'll continue. What I've done is sanded off the finish along the edge here, and before I look to stain it, I want to mark a couple of spots where I can drill a small hole that will allow me to place screws from underneath into this case. I've measured where the case sits on this, and mark the four spots where I plan to drill. Two here, two here. So I'll place the holes and then we'll continue. 
I've placed the four holes and on the bottom I widened the holes a little bit so when I place the screws the heads will be flush with the wood. Next I'm going to work on staining and polishing the base. That'll take a while um, but once that's completed we'll continue. I've stained and polished the base and what I'm going to do next is place a bit of wood glue along here and then just seat the clock over it. And this is quite heavy. The weight of it is enough to hold it down. No need to clamp it. And then once that sets, I'll just be turning the whole thing on its side and I'll insert the screws on the bottom and that should complete it. So I'll get to work on that and then we'll continue. I've got it reattached to the base. It's glued in, it's screwed together, and it's pretty much good to go. I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on again, make sure it's still running, which it is. Let's reset the in power interruption indicator here. And there you have it, the Telecron Oxford from 1928. Now I can finally send it down to Karen I'm sure she's been wondering what's taking so long. And now I can say that pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.